Hey, what's up, everybody? Wisconsin football stays hot on the recruiting trail. We're going to break down what it all means coming up on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for making Locked On Badgers your first listen every single day. Really appreciate it. Big show today. But first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And today's show, we got Justin Jolka joining us, um, usual guest to the show, great contributor. And I'm just going to jump right into it. We, we had Wisconsin has stayed hot on the recruiting trail, Justin. Uh, we had two commitments that we've had since I last had a show. One just happened over this weekend. So this is pretty breaking news. We're going to yep, start yep. with Tretch Kekahuna. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I've had. I think so. I I believe Um, so. Yeah. So he's 5'11. If not, sorry, Trench. (laughs) I'm pretty sure we're on point. Um, Out of Honolulu, Hawaii, a receiver coming in, a 2023 kid. A couple of interesting things before we get into the game. Same high school as Nick Herbig, same high school as Latu, the transfer safety, uh, a powerhouse high school out there um, in Hawaii. So we're kind kind of building a pipeline into one of the more powerful high schools from a football standpoint in the country, which is awesome and a place where Hawaii, you know, they're not going to keep their top players home anyway. So that's kind of a neat aspect to this. We're already in on some other kids with that class, but uh, let's turn it to Tretch. Justin, what are your thoughts on him? I know you're, you're pretty high on this one. I really like his quickness and ability to separate off the line. Uh, I don't think we have a guy in the room right now that gets off the line as quickly and as explosively as he does. Uh, It's a little bit different. I think the closest I, the the last guy we had like this was Erickson. So it's been a bit since we've had a guy that I feel like can do this. I like his build. Uh, He's 5'11. I think he's what, about a buck 90 right now? He's he's thickly built. Yeah. He's he's a, he's a thick kid for, I have him listed as at 180, but he's a solid player. Yeah. Yeah. He's stocky for, Mm -hmm. for a guy that's that tall. And I I think that helps a lot with him. Like, I think he's going to be physical. He's going to be a guy who I think if you try getting up on him, He's going to make you work for it if you're going to actually stop him. Um, I will say this. I don't think he's going to be a huge deep threat, even though I think there's some good speed there. I just see when you look at his skill set and where he excels the most is is right off the line. He's he's just got jets off the first few steps and can just take advantage of guys. Um, You probably could use him in that aspect. I just don't I don't think it's the strength that some of the other is like a. You and I had discussed, I was just bringing up how I viewed him as compared to Anthony Brown, who's another receiver recruit we're looking at. Mm-hmm. And the difference is, is I think where I see Tretch being a very, very quick in that first 10 to 15 yard range. And you'd look at the film of Brown, you could see him kind of explode from like the 10 to 30 range and that acceleration between the two. And I, I think that what you'll see is a guy who can get open at will almost at the college level. If, if everything goes right with him, if the route running comes around, like there's a couple of, couple of routes you watch in his film where he rounds it off, Mm -hmm. but he's so, he's so good at getting away from people that it doesn't matter. Um, That's something that he's going to, he's going to clean up a little bit when he gets to the college level. Um, I think he will be a guy that his elusiveness will play. I don't think we have a guy who's this elusive in the wide receiver room either right now. Um, he really has a great lateral movement when he's in space and a guy who I think is going to cause problems for defenders that aren't on top of him. Um, and he is, he is decisive. I know Evan Flood had his write up on him talking about how he thought that he's, he's a guy who stays downhill, even though he, he does have some elusiveness. And I agree with that. There's not a lot of wasted motion with him. Right. North, he will south. move laterally and then keep going. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's decisive moves for a purpose rather than dancing around. Um, so I do like the pickup. I, if I had to rate him, I would probably put him. I think he's a high three star type guy. I, I do think that there's a ceiling there for him to be a guy who is a, a very, very good college receiver if everything breaks right. So, I, a couple of things you, you hit on that I think are a spot on and are pretty interesting to me. The first is not a lot of guys like him on the roster. I agree with that. Like, you look at the receivers now the Marcus Allen's, the Cheem Rays, the Tommy McIntosh's, the Vinny Anthony's, you know, all the guys we've talked about coming in, uh, the Brooks, those are all bigger, more physical, Long longer striders, strider yeah. receivers, yeah. right? So, I really think you hit on something when 
you know, we really are, Wisconsin really is bringing somebody into this that, that doesn't match up with anybody on the roster. And that helps when you're developing passing concepts, mm-hmm. right? You have a couple guys yeah. taking the top off, a third down possession guy. Now you got this third down kind of slot guy who can get open, create separation. Um, so that's really interesting to me. Uh, another guy that you kind of compared to him to from a body standpoint was Taylor, right? Like, yeah. um, AJ yeah, Taylor, I, I think, is a pretty good. Oh, yeah. I John, think not Jonathan Taylor. Sorry, I yeah. should be very specific. <laughs> AJ Taylor, former receiver. AJ Taylor. He's he's about forty pounds lighter. Yeah, not so. Jonathan Taylor, but I think the AJ Taylor comp is kind of interesting too because I can see the same type of body style. Yeah, Taylor was a was a converted running back, so he's a little thicker build. He was roughly around five eleven, six foot. Also, um, I like Tretch off the line a little bit more, but I think they're similar in terms of the speed that they had. I mean, I think if I if it doesn't elude me, I believe that Taylor was a four, four kid too. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it always showed on the field with him. Right. He was like a four, four kid that looked like a four five kid on the field. Yeah. Which exactly. is still fast enough at the college level. Like yeah. he was a good player. Yeah. He was, he was, he is a guy who put up numbers. They were solid mm-hmm. numbers consistently. It's just that he was never a guy that you expected him to be as a four star. Um, I think Tretch has a little bit more off the line. He's a little bit more elusive. I think Taylor was a little bit more of a speed guy that was, was, not really a guy who created a lot of problems in terms of his elusiveness when he was in routes. What do you think about, I, I wanted to kick, put you on, this might put you on the spot a little bit. We haven't talked about this a lot, but why have previous slot receivers not worked at Wisconsin? You know, guys like Crookshank, Dunn wasn't effective, even though he used them as spots. Stephen Bracy, there, there's been others. They're why just, is- in all honesty, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with size and build. Um, it's really hard to keep, to get guys at that position that have good size and that have that type of quickness. Now, if you're a team like Alabama or Clemson or Ohio state, you can get a guy who's five eleven, six foot that has elite quickness and has, you know, can carry 180, 190 pounds. If you're a school like Wisconsin, you're looking at guys who are five, eight, five, nine, who show elite quickness, but maybe 165, 175 pounds, and it's hard with the shorter catch radius mm-hmm. and and the ability to keep those guys on the field just from the physicality standpoint of it to get them to be highly productive players. Now, there are guys that happen every once in a while. I mean, if you want to look at the NFL, a guy who was excellent at it was a running back was Darren Sproles. I mean, he was, what, 5'5", five, 5'6"? Five, oh, five, yeah, he six. was tiny, like 5'6". But yeah. the guy was like dynamite and was amazing at getting open. Um but those guys are really hard to come by that are under, I would say, 5'10". Like, it's you have to be lucky and normally have a pedigree to be able to pull guys like that in. Right. Um, and when I compared him, like, that's what I kind of told you. I'm like, some he has been discussed a little bit as a gadget guy. I can understand using that mindset on him because I think you could throw him in the backfield con- conceivably on third long sure, as sure. a guy out of the backfield because I think he creates that kind of elusiveness. I just think that he projects mostly as a slot guy, and I think he is going to be big and strong enough if you wanted to put him on the outside that you can do it. Well, I think it's a good point in that this is a, a slot guy probably more because of the, the roster composition, yeah, right, than because we have to – we have to find us like it, it's I'm, his biggest strength. Like right. they, if you're going to pick a spot for him, that's where he would, he projects the best. I think that on, on previous Badger teams that maybe we weren't as high on some of the younger receivers, he might be an outside guy. Cause I think at five yeah. eleven, he, he has enough to be there and he's more of a slot guy now. Cause we can actually put him in his best spot instead of needing him on the outside. Yeah. I agree um, with that. The other thing I'd say, which is always a great thing is this is a camp offer. We've, we've yeah. talked about the, the history here with the Badgers. They say whatever you will for sometimes the recruiting there's there's been some recruiting issues here and there this this cycle. I mean, Badgers Badger coaches the evaluations they hit on camp offers. I mean, they they have a pretty strong track record for seeing a guy liking him and offering him. I, I recommend for your listeners to go look for. There's some camp footage of, of him out there that's running around. He is incredible. He looks the, the part. The way he just he just absolutely destroys the guy that's across from him in the camp footage from the Wisconsin camp. Like he just. Okay. His, how quickly he he makes a move on the guy, and they just are. He broke a guy's ankles on one play, oh, and it geez. was like a it was like a ten yard play, and it's like you watch him set the guy up, and he just crumbles. Um, but he he looks incredibly fast in the short area that they show on that film. Um, oh, I love and it's it. possible he's even better than he was last season. So, I think Wisconsin hit on this one. I do think that this is a guy that will eventually be productive for them. To what level, I don't know, but I think he will see the field. Okay, no, I love it, man. 
All right, coming up, everybody, we have uh, another cornerback offer. This this commit happened a couple days ago. We haven't had a chance to talk about it on show, so we're going to keep Justin on. We're going to talk about a new addition into the Badgers football secondary. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information, future wagers, props, sports news, just an incredible resource. If it's something that interests you, do it responsibly, but it's a great way to test your sports knowledge and have some fun while you're doing it. Uh, great time to play some futures. The NBA, listen, the NBA draft is coming up. You can get in action on that. And then the season, not a couple months after that, we're going to be getting into NBA preseason stuff. You can already make your futures bets. You know, Golden State going to repeat. Maybe Memphis, right? That super young team that that put a scare on a lot of people this year. Maybe they go. Um, Boston will be back strong again. Great time for all your sports futures. We've talked about the Badgers over under 8.5 a lot. We talked about that with Justin. Him and I are both homers. We're both over. It's a great time if you think you have a great read on a Big Ten team. Uh, Nebraska is going to go under again, probably, right? Because historically, that's all they do in the Big Ten. So have fun with it. Do it responsibly. All the future um, props, odds, wagers, bet online. Use your mobile device today. Head to the website, bet online, where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. Really, really appreciate all the the likes and listens, uh, subscriptions, reviews, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it means a ton to to me personally, and you know we're just going to continue to build this community. Uh, we're going to bring Justin back on uh, as promised and talk a little bit about AJ Tisdell, who uh, committed a couple days ago, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it on the show yet. Cornerback, five eleven, out of College State, uh, College State College Station, Texas, uh, one hundred seventy five, hundred eighty pounds. Other offers from Baylor, Cal. You know, so obviously academics aren't aren't ever going to be an issue if he's got Cal, Wisconsin offers. Um, curious where you are with AJ Tizel, Tisdell, Justin, after you're watching the film. Well, when you hear two schools like Baylor and Cal, who are also very very good defensive teams, mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's fair to say it's a good offer. Uh, I I would agree with that. Watching the film, I think he's a high floor guy. I think you look at it. I think he projects well as like a Fayon Hicks or a Tyndall type corner. A guy who's who's a good athlete, not necessarily a great one. Um, he moves well in the field. He's very technical. You watch him. He does a good job of playing the man. He's not a guy who takes a lot of risks in coverage and goes after the ball. He will. He has a couple of picks in this film, typically on deeper routes uh, where he's mm -hmm. undercutting the receiver, uh, taking it away. But he's not a guy that you see take a lot of chances in coverage. Yeah, I, I think that matches up pretty well with what I saw. You know, there were there were a couple of plays where he he used the sideline really well. I mean, he he to your point looks like a a high floor guy, which is fine. Like you need mm -hmm. some of those guys. Uh, it looks like to me, and we talked about it a little offline, kind of in the history of the Devin Smiths, the Derek Tindells, you know mm -hmm. that that kind of Wisconsin cornerback that was always good enough, yeah. uh, but not he, not but not a ceiling yeah. raiser, yeah. right? I He's, think we're kind he, of saying the same thing. He is not a guy who is who is a miss in my regard. This is not a reach. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who who you're if you what you've seen out there, and they've had very good coverage for the most part, bar playing the truly elite teams in college football and their ability to shut down teams. So I you know I think when you look at it, he's going to be good against just about everybody. Will he be able to hold up against the Ohio States of the world? Time will tell on that. We've right. seen time and time again where there are corners who make that leap. Iowa's notorious for it, where they end up turning guys into NFL players, and you look at them and they're like, well, these guys aren't measurable standpoint, hugely different than what Wisconsin has, but they find ways to turn into really productive players. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say that this guy can't be exceptional because we don't mm -hmm. know yet, but I think his floor is, is fairly – you know, you feel comfortable with it. He's not a guy who I think is going to be a problem for you in terms of a, being a reach or a guy who just doesn't have it at this level. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And and I think you make a really good point about the defenses that of the teams that have offered him. You know, if Baylor's looking into it, if Wisconsin, Jim Leonard are, are interested, it's definitely a prospect that, that checks a lot of boxes from talent mm -hmm. evaluator standpoint. Um, the other point you make about will he be able to hold against Ohio State I mean, you and I both know this. There's there's seven cornerbacks in the country every year yeah. that can maybe hold up against those dudes, yep. right? And and frankly, Wisconsin, whether it's you know this guy or anyone else, rarely has any of them. You know, yep. it's just that that's such a hard ask for those those type of matchups. But it, will he will he contribute to the defense? Will he be a three or four year guy? Yeah, I think he, I think he checks a lot of boxes. Like he's big enough, he's fast enough. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the film looks good, good offer list. You know, so it checks a lot of the boxes. It's just not. Again, and this is something that we search for all the time. It's just not that 
that number one type cornerback yeah. profile, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, guys can become number one quarterbacks without oh, that yeah. profile, but it's, he doesn't have that profile. Well, I mean, it, I mean, if we're talking that, you're looking for the kids who are coming out and running a four four who have seven picks in their last season yep. and, and six ten pass deflection. Yeah, exactly. Those guys don't come around very often, mm-hmm. and even those guys take a lot of work to become truly elite unless they're just a freak and we see one of those guys once every three or four years in college football and they're playing on bama ohio state or clemson right you at wisconsin the thing is you have to pick and choose a corner Mm -hmm. right you either have to pick raw raw tools the raw tool set or you have to pick the more refined cornerback that doesn't have that raw to raw tool set right so Mm -hmm. and and just let's look at our our past history here it's guys like al ashford al ashford Mm -hmm. has that athletic tool set right from from two years ago or two cycles ago or one cycle ago. I already forget. I think it's, it's two, two cycles ago. It's yeah. two. He was on the yeah. roster last year. He, had, yep. he was down with an injury. So he rushed six foot, six foot, six foot one guy runs a four, four, but he's raw. Mm-hmm. You know, Darren, Darren, uh, Duran Harrell, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of Colorado was six, four, four kid. Grand, yep. Yep. But just super raw. Right. Yeah. Uh, Desmond Southard, Southward, you know, was a safety, but same type of deal. Super yeah. raw, but really athletic, but it's hard. You know, like you have to pick and choose at Wisconsin. And, and this guy Tisdell is just more of a, a, solid polished player but he doesn't have that that high high end athleticism yeah, yeah. um i want that. i want to th- uh, kind of ping you on the the secondary in general because i think in my opinion this is a, a big year for recruiting the secondary right because you, you brought mm-hmm. in four transfers for a reason you know all these guys are going to leave except for uh Latou, the safety you know mm-hmm. they're all going to move on and then the young guys on the roster it's hallman ashford Laffey, melvin and then last year avion jones um you know, Corey lied. How do you feel about that young group of corners? Is this a spot that, that do we need to add two or three corners in this cycle? I like Hallman a lot. I think mm-hmm. he's a guy that we may see, see the field this year quite a bit in rotation. Um, I think that Evan Jones, I think will be a guy that, that breaks through. People seem to he, really he, like him. Everybody yeah. I talked to likes Avion Jones. I think that he's going to be a Jack of all trades kind of guy. Um, They'll, they'll move them wherever they want, which if, if you're a corner, that's great. If you can play slot and on the outside, awesome. Short, Ashford, interruption, short interruption really quick. Yeah. Sorry, because I wanted to stay on, on Avion really quick. I asked John Garcia, the Sports Illustrated recruiting director. I said, pick one guy from last year's cycle that you think is really underrated, and he went right to Avion Jones. Mm-hmm. I'd agree um, with so that. Everybody seems it, to love yeah. him. All right, sorry, go ahead. And and it was Hallman the, probably the, what was it, two years ago now? Yeah, when when he was on there, I, he was a guy that was a four star on some on some sites. So I think he's a guy that when you watch some of the footage of him doing doing coverage drills and stuff like that, you'd watch how fast his feet were, and it's like, geez, this kid can really move. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm very high on him. Ashford, I really want to see. Um, I'm Just hopeful that he's so healthy raw. this year and we can get him out there uh, because he's a guy who I think will make a huge leap when he gets out there and gets some reps under him. Lafayette, I don't know what to make of. Uh, he's mm-hmm. a guy I'm hoping that we kind of start to see some things from. I'm curious if they're going to move him to safety more. Um, I think he's big enough to do that. But it will be really interesting to see what we do with some of these guys. Um, I don't know what to make of the, the room, honestly, after this year. I, I think Bar Hallman, I'm not really sure there's anybody I feel strongly about being that was that had a super high floor. There are a lot of guys who had pretty high ceilings mm-hmm. that were in that group. And it's like... Okay, well, I guess we'll find out real quick. Now, we know Leonard can basically take anybody and make them capable. The question is, is can he turn these guys into lockdowns or guys who that can play at a very high level, given that the defense is probably going to give them, not make them work exceptionally hard. I, right. I, I, I feel like the pass rush is going to be strong for the foreseeable future at, right, as of right now. Yeah, I think quarterbacks are going to be uncomfortable. And and can you imagine how scary this defense would be if you if you gave them – this group of linebackers, this group of edge players that we have in the pipeline right now, and you put a a couple second or third round cornerbacks out there oh, yeah. behind them. Not even a oh, not the, even a first. We, round we saw Iowa's defense do what Wisconsin's defense could do with the with high level corner talent, mm-hmm. which is you suddenly start seeing turn interceptions happen like crazy in bunches because the pass rush is going to make it really uncomfortable for quarterbacks. And the first thing that goes when a quarterback has that happen is decision-making and accuracy. So the ball starts ending up in places where you don't want it to. And guys can get opportunities to make plays on the ball. Right. 
All right. No, I agree. I think it's I think it's a really interesting young group. I I think you have to get another another corner in this cycle for sure. And yeah. I think they're they're gunning on. I mean, Jace Arnold, yeah. Braden Marshall's out there. I think there's two. There's going to be two more yet this cycle. I, I think it's I'll be shocked spot. if it's I'll be shocked if it's less than three. I mean, two two is the minimum though. We, I mean, yeah. we agree. They have to bring in a couple more bodies with all these yep. transfers. Leaving. They're they're, they're in. They're parties. doing well in a couple of of Marshall. I mean, you I know, mean, he was here not long ago. Braden Marshall. Yep. I'm I'm hopeful that they lock him down. Um, I yep. think they feel pretty good about their their chances currently, and we'll see where that goes. I mean, he'd be a nice pickup for them. He's another guy we just talking about, kind of with Tretch adding something to the room for wide receivers. I think he adds something to the room for cornerbacks. Yes, I agree. Exceptional 100%. short area quickness. Yes, I had the same thing when I watched. It. He's explosive in in the short area. Like he mm-hmm. he's not a, doesn't have great great deep speed. It looks like on film like great speed, but his short area stuff is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Braden Marshall. So obviously, when we get him. Um, coming up next, everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about big picture recruiting stuff. I'm going to ask Justin a, a few questions. Um, what happens at quarterback if we don't get Kineholtz? Is he satisfied with the running back room that we have right now? Do we need to add another? Is it up to par? Same with the receiver question. All that coming up on uh, next on our segment. But first, today's show is brought to you by the following sponsors. All right, we're bringing Justin back into the show uh, as promised. And once again, Justin, thank you for joining as, as always, regular contributor, always bringing good insight. Um, I want to ask you a couple bigger picture 2023 questions. Specifically, let's start with running back. Um, Nate White, Jacquez Keys in the fold. Um, and barring some type of, of four or five star guy that falls into the lap. Like I, I think Edwards. we're pretty right. Like somebody yeah. that you just can't turn down that comes knocking on Paul Chris door late at night. Um, barring that. Are you satisfied with this running back room? Is this is this a good Wisconsin recruiting class? Is this how the running back recruiting group should normally look at Wisconsin? I think it's solid. I, I won't say it's good because I think Wisconsin is one of the few schools that that good for Wisconsin should be. We pulled in a mid four star. Mm-hmm. I think that they have the pedigree at that position that that's that's where that you could say they had a good cycle if that happens. Now, would I be shocked if either one of these guys turned into an absolute wrecking ball at running back? Not at all. Um, they typically do a pretty good job of, of you know, looking through tape and finding good guys. I like Nate White. You like him, too. Yeah. Um, I like Keys, too. Um, I think it's a nice thunder and lightning backfield that you get out of these two. It'll be interesting to see how they develop over the next few years. Um, but I feel pretty good about both of those backs. I, I don't feel like either is a reach. I just think that when you look at it, they didn't get somebody that is a, you know, that freak of nature, 215 six foot guy who right. runs a four four and is super elusive you're not blown away by it yeah well i would say this too both of these guys feel like it they feel like they have half the equation or more than mm-hmm. half. like Nate white is is really quick elusive tough to tackle but he's not really big he's not yeah. really really polished and jack was keys is kind of the opposite right yeah, really he's big a battery physical. ram Battery ram, a fast battery ram. Maybe you'd like to really see a little elusive. more, a little more vision and elusiveness. Yeah, you'd like to see a little bit more of each of them in each other, yeah. almost. Um, yes. So they both do feel kind of like incomplete prospects. I really like both of them. I, I think Nate White has more upside. Yeah. Um, I think he has a tremendous amount of upside if he hits because he's yeah. explosive in in short area quickness. Um, it's for me, just to answer that question, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with it. I, I think I'm a little I agree with you. you. You know, I don't think either's a home run, but I think both are really good. And at the end of the day, if mm-hmm. you had two really good guys to a spot, both plan A guys, I think you hit. And yeah. I could see at the end of the cycle Keys being a four star guy, adding the Michigan offer, big physical. Um his senior season's gonna be ridiculous, I think. So oh yeah. I can see him yeah, bumping. He'll definitely four. put up numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um let's move to receivers. Uh this it's very possible. It, I'm not sure it's over, but it's very possible Wisconsin is going to be content with a two receiver group with Dixon, uh, Colin Dixon, who we've talked about, and Tretch, who we talked about today. Are you satisfied with that receiver group in a recruiting class? I like both of them. I honestly like the last three cycles. I've been pretty pretty happy with what we've brought in for wide receivers. Um, I like both of these guys. Are are they legit? These guys are locks to be great players. I, I don't feel that way, and I don't think we ever do at Wisconsin until we see some of these guys start to do it. Um, every year we see – you remember in the past, like, five years we've been talking yes. over guys and being like, this is the year. The wide receiver room looks really great. Yes. And then Going back to Krenwick Sanders, right? Yes. And, and wait and till the Jameson. Now. I will look at it now, and I'll tell you flat out this. These are different skill sets than we've had in mm-hmm. the past five years in that room. I feel really good about what what they're starting to do in terms of the type of guys that Woodhead's bringing in. Um, I do like his eye for talent. 
I, I like that both of these guys do something well. I, I think that you get a, a very physical guy at, you know, your bigger receiver here, and then Tretch gives you a lot of that short area quickness. It has a decent build to him, and I think that both of those things project well for these guys. Like, I think they will be, if they're nothing more, I think, you know, you get a good possession receiver out of this group and a guy who will probably be able to cause some yards after catch at the college level. Yeah, I'm a little lower, I think, overall than you are in this group. I I, I like both players, by the way, and mm -hmm. I'm definitely not a professional scout, anything like that. Yeah. I do feel like we missed an opportunity somewhere to add, like, a really high upside ball of clay. And I think yeah. that's what this class or this this roster still misses from its receiver spots. And I would like them to take more flyers on those guys. Because even if you look at last year's group, we talked about, we really like last year's group. Yeah. Right? McIntosh, Vinny Anthony, I love his game. Um, Brooks is a you know big physical receiver. We, we really like last year's group. Even then, I feel like I would just love to see – go out and find a, a raw dude who runs like a 4-4. Like just mm -hmm. flat out flies and see if you can develop them. I don't think we have enough of those dudes on the roster. but So I'm, I'm, I, I like the class. It feels solid to me. I think we need to find a way to add a difference yeah. maker there somehow and take some risks. And, and I, I think that's Anthony Brown, right? If they can find a way to bring sure. him into the fold, sure. then you suddenly have a guy who – like I, I think Tretch can play anywhere. I, I think he projects at any of the receiver spots. I think you can you'd like him at at slot, but Brown is a guy who's a slot receiver. Like I don't think he'll ever right. be big enough that you're comfortable with him on the outside, because if people get their hands on him, he's just not going to have the strength. But if you get him in space on a defender, right. he is going to absolutely fly by them. Yeah, he's got the nitro button. Like mm -hmm. he's he's got that juice. Um, all right, last last big picture recruiting question for 2023. Uh, do we need a tight end in this class? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, I think there's a lot of young talent in the pipeline right now. Um, I think right now Wisconsin just needs to get some of these guys on the field and healthy. Sure. Uh, I, I've, I've discussed this with a few other people, and I feel like this year is going to be a different year for Wisconsin in terms of tight end play. I think it's, it's very much could be a tight end by committee approach. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see multiple guys get close to double digits in receptions just because we'll we'll figure out ways to put guys on there in, in different setups. Because I think they probably feel pretty comfortable about three or four guys. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some young guys that could really project into this that we we don't know anything about yet. Um, who's the tight end that we picked up last year? Not Seagraves, the year before. Uh, the four-star uh, four out of Ohio. Uh, you should have a name before you ping me with that. I'm usually really good with <laughs> I know. names. I'm drawing I'm the blank. Oh, uh, give man. me one sec. Give me one sec. I am drawing a complete blank because you said last year I went right to JT Seagraves. Yeah, see, it, Seagraves is, is a guy who I think needs a year or two. I think he will be a very good one. Um, oh, man, I can't think of his name. He's out of Ohio. Hold on one sec. I got you. Keep going. Um, I really liked him as a as a tight end. I think he's a guy that actually projects oh, Jack to Pugh. stretch the seam. Yes. Yep. Pew, Pew, I think, projects to be able to, to stretch the seam. With him, it's going to be reps. I don't know how they feel about him quite yet. I think from an athleticism standpoint, he might be the most athletic guy that we have on there, you know, that has played the position consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that he has a pretty good chance that if, if all things hit in fall camp, he can be a guy that finds some playing time out there. Do I think that means he's going to have a big year? Not necessarily. He could be a guy that gives you 10 catches, you know, this fall, but they could be valuable catches because I think that he is a guy that can be a mismatch problem with his size and quickness. The the issue I had at tight end, though, and I agree with you, but the part of the problem, it's it's like one of those things where he's saying, uh, I'll use Garando as an example, and I love Garando. I, I'm cheering for him to, to have a really healthy year. He deserves it, right? Isaac Garando, who has not been able to stay healthy. But it's almost like saying, you know, we think this will be the year Garando's healthy. At some point, you need to recruit more bodies, right? And I, I'm just using it as a broad example. Well, when all the tight ends have injury problems – like, because that's really what we're talking about, right? Like, Pew, uh, Ruchi, Condiff, Dominic, I, and I'm not arguing with that at all. The like, problem we need is another is body. That, yeah, the problem is, is that those guys still hold scholarships. So, unfortunately, we can't just recruit over the top of them unless you're going to start flushing guys. And we no, both just, know that that's not how Wisconsin. I think this is going to be a big class, though. I I feel like. So here's what I'll go two ways with this. We it's been told it's been it's been expected that this is going to be a 20 plus class. It's going to be a big class. Um. I think if you have a big class, it's Wisconsin, and you don't have 
like two legit dudes who have really established themselves, there's always room for a tight end somewhere. Yeah. And if that means we don't take a third receiver, fair. if we don't take – because. But some of these guys, we program, need to keep in mind, have the COVID year. And that means that that's fair. there's going to be guys who probably want to stick around because they haven't had the opportunity to really show what they have. And, and guys who are just getting out there who, you know, like Rucci, who's probably like, hey, I've had injuries. I've barely been able to play. I want an opportunity to shine. And, you know, hey, unless I have something going on in my personal life that says, you know, a great job or something that came up, why not? I'll stick around for an extra year. And Maybe that, I make an NFL roster. Yeah, it's a football junkie family anyway. They'll probably mm-hmm. have to get kicked out of Madison. <laughs> um, no, I get it. I just I, there's a part of me that just says this is such a developmental program. Get a tight end every year. Like yeah. put one in the crock pot every year. I don't think you can reach on that though. And I, I think right now Wisconsin is in a very precarious position for where they are in recruiting. Uh, what is it, Ortworth? Yeah, he sounds like he's going to he Iowa. Is, yes. And he's the only guy as of right now that I'm aware of that we have that's it's yeah. still not, you know. Yeah, because the other kid went to ten. Or the other kid went to Miami, Florida, who we really yeah. liked. Um, but it, that that goes back to the other point of there's got to be more than two tight ends in the country that you can get in on at yeah. Wisconsin, right? Like that. Well, I agree with that. When people, I mean, Iowa constantly seems to find these guys right. who run four fives at the tight end position, and Wisconsin can't find those. Like, like you really? got to find another. Body we run then. the same offense. Yeah. You can't tell me that. <laughs> well, these two guys are going somewhere else, so I don't know. And I know you're not making that argument. You're yeah. you're pointing out the reality of the situation, yeah. but the reality is then go find another tight end to target. Like, yeah. Come on, Wait, come on I, it's much like our basketball program. I do not like getting caught with my pants down if something doesn't turn out the way you want. And when it comes right. to recruiting, things rarely end the way you want them to, right. regardless of how good you are at it. So, um, I mean, I, I hear your points. I agree to the to the degree that there's a lot of young talent there. I would still, I'd feel it'd be a miss if you didn't bring in a tight end in this class. If they can find a good body that that projects well, I say go for it. If, yeah. if they, but there's nobody on the board right now. So my way of looking at it is. We're getting pretty late in the cycle to start chasing after new people. Unless That's there's fair. somebody who is really receptive to saying, you know, Wisconsin has a pretty good history at tight end. You know, I want to chat there. And Wisconsin, to be fair, has dropped off a little bit there. Like, I, I know we're still thought of in pretty well regard for tight end. But we were ahead of the curve of everybody in making, you mm-hmm. know, tight end kind of in vogue. There's more more teams out there now that are doing that than when there was in the past which mm-hmm. means that it's kind of watered it down a little bit before it would have been, you know, Penn state, Wisconsin, Iowa. Those are the schools that are, are, you know, really putting the tight end on display. Now that has, you know, gone out to numerous other schools and it's, you know, you start to have to fight over those guys a little bit more where you can't look at it as like, that's a position that we target like Wisconsin and fullbacks, like nobody else is targeting a fullback. So that's we true. can go grab them. So, you know, it's a position we can exploit and find talent at Right. the tight ends become less about that because, teams are no longer looking for just a blocker. They want somebody who can actually go out there and be an athlete. Right. They all want the next Travis Beckham, Lance Kendricks. Mm-hmm. It's harder to find those dudes. Um, Justin, any other kind of really quick big picture thoughts on the 2023 class where we're at, how you feel? We're getting there. Um, I would like to see four or five guys pop here in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping that's the case because I, it starts to get a little uncomfortable if these guys get further away from their their original visit dates in the first couple of weeks of the month without committing mm-hmm. and it's like the longer they have kids have to sit and think about things the more you start to wonder well, what's the hold up because it doesn't normally take very long for a kid to pop especially if they're sold on your school um i get kids wanting to take a couple visits just to kind of get the compare and contrast going but it's it's always makes you a little bit more uncomfortable the longer things go away from a visit yeah that feeling starts to fade a little bit i would agree Hey, everybody, uh, once again, thank you so much for listening to Lockdown Badgers, making your first listen. Uh, Justin coming on the show is always awesome. Brings a ton of insight, as as always. If you have any questions, comments, um, definitely leave them. Email them, Twitter, whatever it is. I try to get st- uh, comments from the, you guys, the community, onto the show as well. Really appreciate it as we build it. If you like the show, please leave a, a like, subscribe, review. It really does help. Um, and with the mock draft, the NBA draft coming right up, right around the corner. Uh, make sure to check out the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. Search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. And you get over 50 insiders that have put all of this together. Johnny Davis is obviously going to be involved in this. So it's an exciting time as Badger fans. Thank you guys again for, for listening. And uh, we'll talk again tomorrow.